Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. Um, we are doing our essential movies for the cinephile today. Our campy number thirteen. Our class of westerns. Right. So we're still with the. Even though we're not technically in June any longer, mm-hmm. we're still going to do a little bit of uh, bleed over of high June. Right. Right. Due to, to circumstances totally beyond our control, we have been uh, a little lax. Uh, it's not our fault. It's not our fault. Uh, I blame um, Mother Nature. Uh, blame uh, my dad being unwell. Uh, uh, health problems. <laughs> health problems. Uh, just circumstances. Anyway, hello everyone. My name is Louis Matos. I am the mustache. I'm excited and happy to be back to be doing a video. It's been a long time. Uh, it's been about three weeks. Yeah. And I'm here with my best buddy as always. Junior Figueroa, a.k.a. The Beard, coming to you live from sunny Puerto Rico. The problem is that we're in the middle of our hurricane season. So uh, while there are sunny days, there are the, the days are usually very hot, and they, that causes uh, uh, thunderstorms. Wet. Yeah, they cause thunderstorms. You know, it, it's that kind of a uh, heat that, that, that it'll turn into into rain. So that's that's what we're going. Through. That's part of what we're going through over here. Uh, and we still got earthquakes, baby. Uh-huh. Oh my God, we still got earthquakes. So we got we got hurricanes. We got thunderstorms. We got blackouts. We have we have we lose power. Two or three times a week, uh, uh, earthquakes. But you know what makes it all worthwhile? Besides the fact that I got you, okay, my buddy. Yeah. Right. You know what also makes it worthwhile? Bikinis, man. <laughs> bikinis. We got bikinis in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, and less than oh, bikinis. <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah. All right. Um, this is. Um, we're doing an introduction to our classic video library. Right. You know, the mustache and the beard has have a video library. If we you don't do. know about that. Yes, we do. Um, it's called Classic Archive Motion Picture Yearbook or Campy. And this is our 13th video. And I'm so glad that you explained that because I can never remember what the letters stand for. Um, and we, and for our library, we always have unambiguous criteria in two parts. So, we're going to go through that right now. Sure. Lay it on me, Clyde. Okay, lay it on me. All right, so our first criteria, we want to be always unambiguous. Um, both the mustache and the beard have to agree yes, on every have single to one agree. of these movies. Right, so this is, this is coming from both of us, not just one. Yes, we love these movies, all, all of them. And if, and if one of us doesn't like it, then it doesn't make the cut. Yeah. All right, and, and the part two of our criteria is that they must always all be a classic. Yes. And we'll define classic in right. three ways. In three ways. One, two, three. <laughs> three ways. Good. Or otherwise, one, two, three. Good. That works for me, too. All right, so longevity is one of the criteria. Yes, because I really can't stand when they, when they say that, you know, this is... This is a, a new classic. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. How do you how do you get a new classic? Yeah, then then that makes classic the term classic ambiguous mm-hmm. and we don't like that. We want to define classic with a narrow definition. So longevity means that they are it has to be uh, longer than fifty years. Right. So each one of these movies are classic in the longevity aspect that they have lasted for 50 years or more. Or more. All right, and then that each movie is exceptional. Exceptional, yes. Now, when we say exceptional, we don't necessarily mean that it was a lavish production with an all-star cast and, you know, an epic or, or, or anything. Uh, a small, small movies, the small cast, even uh, indie movies can be exceptional. It just has to have some kind of Je ne sais quoi. There's something about it that that when you when you finish watching this movie, you're like, damn, that was a good movie. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. And we have to try to define the je ne sais quoi. <laughs> In some subjective way, we, yeah. we argue why it's exception. Um, and then, paradigm shift. Yes, it has, to, it has to have an impact on the industry in some way. Yes. Now, it could be that it, it, um, it led to sequels, right? Or it could be that it, it, it led to, say, a, a television series. Or creation of a genre. genre. Or creation of a genre. Or it, or it, it could be, uh, become the basis for subsequent movies that are, that are, uh, that are obviously borrowing or, or emulating uh, this movie. In some way, it had an impact on the industry. And we always explain that. Uh, genre classification is always part of these campy videos. We classify every single movie. Yeah, because we have a, a pet peeve with yeah. Hollywood, the, the, way, the way they classify. I hate the way uh, Hollywood classifies horror movies. You know, and so we always define them in a better, we try to make it as concise and accessible as possible. Um, as always, today's listings will be in chronological order. Not, not best to worst or worst to best. We love them all, but we, in order to be um, systematic about it, we do them in chronological order. And as usual, we always use our uh, Grey Geek scale of one right. to five. One to five. All of these movies are going to be fours or fives. Five, obviously. Or in between there. So and, 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 and let's face it, we're recommending these movies, yes. okay? <laughs> That's not a doubt. Yes. All right. Um, and because I've already said that these are going to be our uh, Western class, right. they're all going to be Westerns. Right. That's the, that's the mm -hmm. genre ca classification. Yes, but I'm going to, uh, because I'm obsessive compulsive, I will mention it somewhere. <laughs> all right, but you're used to that already. It's okay. It's, it's part of his charm. Yes. And the mandatory kiss on the head. <laughs> All right, number 41. I've been kissing you on the head for 36 years. <laughs> 41, number 41. It's, four, one, yes, four, that means one, we've had four, 40 before this. It's amazing. It's amazing. Um, and we just started last year, so. High Noon number, and is number 41 in uh, year 1952. High Noon. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. Yes, I love that. That, 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 <laughs> that song is very catchy. Uh, High Noon 1952 is an American Western produced by Stanley Kramer from a screenplay written by Carl Foreman, directed by Fred Zinneman, starring Gary Cooper, Grace Kelly, Lloyd Bridges, Thomas Mitchell, I could keep going on, yeah. Katie Gerardo. A uh, jurado, I'm sorry, Katie Jurado, because um, we're Latin, we can say that. Jurado. Uh, Otto Kruger, Henry Morgan, Lon Chaney Jr., and lest I forget, Lee Van Cleef. Lee Van Cleef. <laughs> this is his first movie. Really? This is his, his first, first, movie. first movie. In wow. fact, yeah, they looked at him and they said, um, you might want to get your nose fixed. And he, no, I'm not. And so he goes, oh, yes, I guess you're the bad guy then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the story occurs in real time. It's about a town marshal whose sense of duty is tested when he has to decide whether he should face a gang of killers or leave town with the woman that he just married. married. He just married her. Uh -huh. I mean, if anybody has an excuse to leave, he did. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Get killed or honeymoon? Uh, killed or honeymoon? <coughs> this is a Stanley Kramer production, but distributed by United Artists. The judge has left town, Harvey's quit, and I'm having trouble getting deputies. People got to talk themselves into law and order before they do anything about it. Maybe because down deep they don't care. They just don't care. I think you better go while there's still time. It's better for you and it's better for us. Amy. I mean it. If you won't go with me now, I'll be on that train when it leaves here. I've got to stay. Why must you be so stupid, Will? Have you forgotten what he is? Have you forgotten what he's done to people? Have you forgotten that he's crazy? 
Don't you remember when he sat in that chair and said, You'll never hang me, I'll come back. I'll kill you, Will Ken. I swear it, I'll kill you. A terror-stricken town left him to face four killers, single-handed, at high noon. Uh, genre classification is West is a Western. Longevity, 2021, take away 1952, equals 69 years. It yes. is, of course, eligible. you go first with exceptional, or do you want to go first? No, go exceptional. All right. Uh, objectively, this movie is exceptional because it was nominated for seven Academy Awards. Yes. Um, winning four of them. Best actor for um, our main Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper. Um, best film editing by Elmo Williams and Harry Gerstat. Best film score by Dimitri Tiomkin. Yeah. Very, very famous Dimitri Tiomkin. And best original song, The Ballad of High Noon. <laughs> the one of you are just singing by Do Dimitri Tiomkin. Oh and Ned Washington. <laughs> Right, so, I mean, it was nominated and it won for that song. Because, yes, that song is one of those songs that... You... The song is practically a character of the movie. Uh -huh. And it's uh, one of those uh, earworms that once you hear it, yeah. it's like, doom, 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 doom. I'm like, why am I singing this damn song? <laughs> okay, uh, one of the reasons why it's exceptional, Bill Clinton hosted 17 screenings at the White House with this movie. Uh, Ike Eisenhower uh, screened it at his at his White House. Mm -hmm. Ronald Reagan called this his favorite movie. <laughs> so you have a lot of presidents that love this movie. Um, this movie is among the first 25 movies inducted into the National Film Registry in 1985. Really? Yes, it was one in 1989. I'm sorry, by the Library of Congress. So it is culturally. Uh, historically or aesthetically significant. So yes, it's one of the first ones ever included right. for film preservation. Um, so yes, this is definitely exceptional. Yeah, and it, uh, um, you were talking about a movie that that in, inevitably um, a top ten list. It is always on there, and it is a lot of people argue that this is the greatest western ever made. I personally don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. But I understand um, feeling that way. I understand thinking that it, because it is a great, a great western. It may not be my favorite, but it, 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 it's, it's in like, you know, in the top three. So, um, so that's exceptional. But it's also exceptional for uh, the way in which um, people didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just saying there there were people who did not like this movie. John Wayne did not <laughs> like this movie. In fact, his uh, Rio Bravo was made in response to this to his not liking this movie. So um, so here, here we have uh, uh, it's a, 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 a it's exceptionality goes both ways. Uh -huh. <laughs> Both it had haters. It had haters and it had lovers. And that's what makes it exceptional. Howard Hawks called this an anti-American movie. Yes. <laughs> yes. And John Wayne, you said, you're right, he hated this movie. But Gary Cooper asked him to accept the Academy Award on his behalf. And he did. Yes. <laughs> uh, out of friendship. Yeah. That, that, you know, that, 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 shows, that shows character, you know, that you hate the movie. But your friend asked you, so you did it anyway. And on stage, John Wayne said, I'm a little mad at my agent for telling me not to take this movie. <laughs> so even though he hated the movie, he sees that Gary Cooper gets an Academy Award and goes, damn, I could have gotten this Academy Award. <laughs> he fired his agent. Yeah, so, so haters and lovers mm -hmm. still love this movie because it's exceptional. Yes. Now, Paradigm Shift. You, you want to go first with that one? Um, well, the the, the 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 fact that it set the tone for so many uh, film for so many films that came after this, you know, 
that uh, um, in, in, uh, uh, well, you know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking uh, uh, Outland with, 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 with Sean Connery, right. <laughs> which is a space western. But it it, it, it did it set it set uh, uh, the the idea also. Oh, when, um, how the West was won. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah, that. Yeah, with uh, the, the 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 ending with um, uh, George Pepard. And the guys come in on the train, and it is, it is almost pure mm-hmm. high noon. Swipe, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a swipe of high noon. So uh, that 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 shows a paradigm shift within the industry. If if, if you're being imitated or copied mm-hmm. or, or, or or you set a, a standard, that's a paradigm shift. Yes, this movie has sequels, High Noon Part Two. Uh, Lee Majors was starring in it the, yeah. uh, in the TV movie there was a remake with Tom Skerritt and Outland of course is a high noon rip right I mean it's not a rip it's a homage yeah. right because you know Outland he's alone and he's trying to get other people to help mm-hmm. him and nobody yeah. wants to help him yes. alright so and also the real time device uh, cinematic device oh, has been true. used yeah, in a lot of that. movies yes. the whole right. thing of you're on a clock, the clock is ticking, ticking. and yes. the, so that ticking yes. clock is a device that has been used multiple times as a consequence of the real-time um, cinematic device in this movie. In fact, another person that hated on this movie was Alfred Hitchcock. Really? Yes. He was that like, I didn't know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, because of the fact they're like, uh, oh, uh, it was Grace Kelly's performance that he was uh, upset about the fact that she was um, uh, cardboard in her characterization. And it's like, no, no, she's a Mormon. <laughs> I didn't think she was cardboard. No, I didn't I think, think so. She was simply, no, Quaker, she was a Quaker. She was playing her, yeah, the part. That, and, the, of the, that type of person. And she's she. very helpful in the part. <laughs> All right, so this movie is a paradigm shift. All right, so... Um, so for both of us, we have talked about the paradigm shift. You know, what's funny is I watched this movie with my dad, mm-hmm. and Katie Hurawa comes on. Right. He goes, oh my God, Katie Hurawa! <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, as a Puerto Rican, you yeah. know, he's, he's familiar with a lot of um, uh, Latin actors. And, you Especially know, from that era. Yeah, and so, so he, and when he sees, sees her, he was like, oh, taken aback by the fact that she had a role in this. Um... We'll go to ratings. Uh, loved this movie because the marshal could have left, but duty kept him there. It's deliberately slow to build suspense. I found it innovative, and I love the haters. Howard Hawks, uh, John Wayne, and Alfred Hitchcock all hating on this movie. The fact that they hated on it, although John Wayne admitted to a little bit of jealousy, because he said, I could have had that one. And I turned it down. <laughs> so yes, I love this movie. I give it five great geeks. I think Yay! it's perfect. Five great geeks. And you? What say you? I say I really like this movie. I really like this movie. Now there are two schools of thought. Okay, uh, the haters are, are, are like. Um, well, there's two schools of thought. How many movies haven't we seen where the marshal or sheriff is in trouble mm-hmm. and the townspeople join in uh, uh, yeah. to help, right? And there are two schools of thought to that. Uh, there are, there, there's one that, that says, yes, this is the frontier. This is their town. They have a right, a responsibility a state. to stand, to stand up, to stand up. Whereas there's another school of thought that says, no, they're ordinary people, shopkeepers, bartender. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's uh, not their delivery job. St- it's not their job. The, it's the job of the professionals. If you put it in the hands of the amateurs, you're asking for trouble. This is why you hire a marshal, a sheriff, or or, or whatever. So I don't I don't know I uh, uh, I understand both 
points of view. But to me, it, it, the, the movie is so uh, well done, and, and it, it presents its case so well mm -hmm. that I'm not going to, even if, if I can see the other point of view, I'm not going to take that uh, away from it. So for me, I, I agree with you, five great games. Yes. I can't think of anything that... Uh, it, that it was just so innovative and new at, at the time. And also, you're right. That's one of the reasons why Howard Hawks hated it. And he was like, you know, he's he, the sheriff asking for help. He's the one that's supposed to protect them. And I get that point of view. John Wayne said, you know, uh, why did he go asking for help? He needed yeah. help. In, in, in Real Bravo, uh, Ward Bond volunteers... And he says, no, you're an amateur. You're gonna, all you're going to do is get yourself killed and maybe get me killed too. Mm -hmm. Which is, he's stating his case there. But on the other hand, I'm sorry. I don't care if I'm a shopkeeper. I don't care if I'm a bartender. I don't care if I work in a livery stable. This is my town. I have, I have it, it's my place. I have to be able to stand up and to, to, to defend that. And this is the you know, wild west. Wild it's a frontier. All right, so, so you agree? I agree. Four great geeks. Uh, five great geeks. I was, I was like, what? Four, uh, five great geeks. And not that you five. can't say four, but... No, 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 I, 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 I know, you I made know a taste for five. Okay, so yeah, uh, we, we both gave our ratings, so it is with great pride and respect that we induct High Noon 1952 as our movie number 41 into the Mustache and the Beard's classic video library, classic archived... Motion Picture Yearbook, Take a Bow. I really enjoyed watching this movie. All right, so moving on. Moving right along. Number 42 is Ride the High Country, 1962. Nine, that was a whole seven years old. Yeah. <clears throat> Ride the High Country is an American Cinemascope Western film Directed by Sam Peckinpah. Yay, Sam Peckinpah. Written by N.D. Stone Jr., William S. Roberts, and Sam Peckinpah. It's produced by Richard E. Lyons. Starring Randolph Scott, Joel McRae, and Marion Hartley. And this is her first movie. Right. Very young, Marion Hartley. Yeah, and very pretty. An ex-lawman is hired to transport gold from a mining town to the bank in Ornitos, California. Little does he know that his old partner and his young sidekick, who he hired to come along with him, they plan on stealing the gold for themselves. This movie is a Metro Color, Metro Goldwyn Mayer production, also distributed by MGM. In all the stirring legends of the frontier west, there is none as exciting as the reckless saga of the men who pushed the last outposts of civilization across the Sierra Nevadas. The men who ride the high country. You add them all up and I'd figure I was owed about all the gold we could carry out of these mountains. Looks like you've got a pretty good claim. <laughs> oh, it's a gold mine, honey. Why don't you come on over and take a look? The lure of gold and the lust for excitement held them together. Two of a kind when danger threatened, but miles apart when tempers blazed. You always fancied yourself faster than me. Draw, you damn tin horn! Everywhere, the wildness of the country seemed to get inside the people themselves. Even hard-bitten adventurers like Randolph Scott and Joel McRae were as rash as the younger generation, represented by two of Hollywood's fastest-rising young stars. When I questioned you about that boy, I should have gone a bit deeper into the subject of character. I came to Core School to be married, and that's what I'm going to be, married. Marriott Hartley, refreshingly different with her red hair and freckles, recklessly pitted one suitor against another. Looks like the girl he's been going down the mountain to see. I'll say one thing, she's sure worth the trip. Looks like a warm one. 
Ronald Starr is the dynamic tenderfoot who'd rather fight than love. Go get him, Tiger. You're doing fine. There were few who could say who was bad and who was good, especially the two tall men who suited their actions to the era in which they lived. Uh, the genre classification is Western. The longevity is 2021 to 1962, which is 59 years. So it is eligible for our uh, classic video library. All right, so exceptional. Um, this movie is exceptionally boring. No. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 had a, I just had a, felt the, the need to throw that in there. Some people might actually feel that way. Uh, no, it, it is slow moving in, in, in parts, especially in the beginning. Uh -huh. It is a... Like High Noon, it's also... Yes, yes, the High Noon is like that also. It is a char character study. It is, we are presented with these two, um, I, we have actually two heroes, but one is like an anti-hero. And they're being played by Randolph Scott and Joel McRae. Whoa! Mm -hmm. You know? So, um, which in that right there is, is, is exceptional. Any Western with Randolph Scott is, is, is exceptional. Even, even when it's, it's boring, it's, it's, a, it's exceptional. Um, so so we're, we're being presented with a character study on these, uh, 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 a, 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 you know, a great lawman and his friend who has become tarnished. And so we have to we have to watch and understand where, where each is coming from and how that impacts on, on, on their relationship. So it, it's very it's a, a somewhat cerebral uh, western. That doesn't mean that it's not good because I mean we're talking about Randall Scott and Joe McRae. These guys could read the phone book and make it exciting. So I, I'm not saying that it's not, but it isn't. Um, it isn't action oriented. You know, you're not you're not having a lot of uh, 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 chases and shootouts, and there's no Indians. You know, and, 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 and instead, it, it, it's all about people and, and, and caring and, and, and right and wrong. It, 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 it's a movie about right, or what's mm -hmm. right and what's wrong. Correct. So, um, in that respect. And that was a, and 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 um, here we have Sam Peckinpah directing this movie. Now Sam Peckinpah's reputation is for shoot 'em ups and blood and violence and everything, and he had creative control over this movie, and and he helped write the screenplay, and and so what we're getting here is what he thought was important, even if um, even if it, if the pace seems a little slow. So uh, I think it's an exceptional movie. What do you think? All right. Um, I love Randolph Scott. I know you do too. I love him in everything he's been in. Everything that I've seen him, I, I have enjoyed those movies. This is an atypical role for him. He's older. Right. And it's it shows. Old. It shows. But even to the extent that he and Joel McRae signed on to do different parts. They each had the other oh, role, yeah. and during the, the, the looking at the screenplay, they said, why don't we switch parts, and they switched parts, and Randolph Scott is playing a different role than what we're normally accustomed to him playing. I think that adds to this movie. Um, he is an anti-hero in this yeah, movie, and yeah. that is not something that we're accustomed to. Uh, this, the switch adds a lot to this movie. This movie was a Cannes Film Festival movie and it won first prize. Wow. <laughs> uh, the pres it, is, it was also selected for preservation in the Fa National Film Registry mm -hmm. in 1992. So three years later after the, mo uh, the, the film registry opened, this movie is selected for uh, being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. This movie is definitely exceptional. Well, I just wanted to say one other thing. Um, <coughs> when the first time I saw this movie, I didn't know who Joel McCray was. I mean, that's not true. I knew he was an actor, and I knew he, he did a lot of westerns, but I wasn't a Joel McCray fan. I was a Randolph Scott 
things. I was watching the movie because of Randall Scott. Then I, and, and and then you know I, I saw uh, Joel McRae. Since then, I've become a Joel McRae fan, and I've been I've been tracking down uh, his movies and, and watching them. And he's an incredible actor. They're incredible uh, westerns, which make me like this movie even more. Okay. Paradigm shift. Paradigm shift. Okay, one. Randall Scott's last movie. Mm-hmm. So sad. I really. Randall Scott is one of those few actors that you just tell me he's in a movie and I'll watch it. I don't have to know what the movie is about. Mm-hmm. I will watch it because he's in it. Even a non Western. Even a non Western, you know? So, uh, yeah, I just watched. Um, it was Go for Broke, a uh, 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 war movie that, that, that he did. So, uh, so that's, that's a paradigm shift right there. No more Randall Scott. On top of that, it was supposed to be Joel McRae's last movie also. He was also retiring. And these two friends had chosen this movie to, 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 that this was supposed to be their swan song. Now what happened is that like four years later they talked Joel McRae into, into doing something and then, like four years after that they, they talked they talk, and both times of that he's coming out of retirement um, to do something. He, they did, they really did uh, retire after this movie and that is so sad but it's so cool to see them um, in this movie and it really sets the tone for a lot of Buddy movies. I, I just see. I, I just see uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid in this in, 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 in this movie. So um, that's a paradigm shift. And of course, Sam Peckinpah, right, directing um, the, the the incredible westerns we get after after this movie. And then Marion Hartley's uh, first movie. And she's so so baby faced and, and so so. Yeah, so Girl Next Door in, the, in, in, in this movie. Yeah, this is actually Sam Beckinpah's second directing movie. The first movie he directed was The Deadly Companions, which he hated that experience because Maureen O'Hara was the lead in that movie and her brother kept telling him, how are you going to tell Maureen O'Hara how to, you know, so the fact that he, yeah, so he, how to act. So he um, didn't have creative control in that first movie and he said, never again will I do a movie that I'm going to direct and I don't have to create control. So he had control over the script, which right. the, initial it. Script, it. the initial script was cracked um, because the, the person credited for writing this movie was a drunkard. So the movie, the, the, the script was 150 pages of garbage. So what? Sam, yes, Sam Peck and Paul and the, the person's best friend, they uh, rewrote the movie and allowed the guy to still take credit and have the lead credit. So these guys, Sam Peck and Paul, cleaned up the movie, uh, took creative control, and when the two uh, actors said they would like to switch, he thought about it and said, you know what, let's go with it. Well, this is what I'm saying that that it, it is a, the movie is a little uh, a slow movie, uh-huh. but it 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 is meant to be. It's not it's not slow moving because they didn't know what they were doing. It's, it's slow moving on purpose because this is what the movie is about. Mm-hmm. It's about characters. It's about character, right? And so this, and it's about decisions. The paradigm shift is absolute. Yes, Randolph Scott's last movie, but it's Sam Peckinpah's. First, real I'm, movie. I, I'm right. doing this my right. way. First, real <laughs> right. movie. So it's his second, but it's his first. I'm in control, and I, what I say goes. And I, and obviously, we know Sam Peck and Paul because of his, you right. know, all of the movies that he did. Right. And 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 the, the thing is that this movie is very different. Like this movie is so different from the Wild Bunch, right? Mm-hmm. But. It is not the, it's not that different in the sense that it is it's got style. It's stylish, it's 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 well made, it's polished, it's 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 an exceptional movie. 
So in that respect, it, it's unpeccable. But it's, it's interesting that it's not what you, when you say it's unpeccable, it's not what you expect. Listen, listen. Ratings. Uh, ratings. I, 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 I really love this movie. This is why I, I, I recommend it. Um, I, I, if I had to say goodbye to Randall Scott, this is the movie I want to say goodbye to Randall Scott and Joe McCray. Uh, in and, and I loved uh, 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 Married uh, Married Hartley and, and James Drury from uh, the Virginia TV show. He's, he's one of the brothers. Uh, and he's, he's in the movie and uh, so I I I, I got I got I can't think of anything uh, any, anything negative to say. Um, if the movie works for me, so I'm gonna give it five. I'm gonna all right. I resisted this movie uh, because you're the one that suggested it. I was like, I resisted it till the end. Um, but I loved it. I mean, I love Randolph Scott. And Joel McRae is special in this movie. I also loved the young heck uh, Longtree. Uh, Ron Starr is right. the actor. I was like, wow, this kid, you know, he's playing along with some stars, right? The kid that gets to find himself stuck in the middle uh -huh. between Randall Scott and Joel McCray. Oh, man, I mean, oh, my God, talk, talk, talk about pressure. All right, so, you know, Ron Starr is, 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 is doing this role, and we're, you know, the two aging actors, they can't do the stunts. Heck, Longtree is the character that is doing the movement and he's the one that's gonna the do the shooting the and all, <laughs> all of that. So, um, but, you know, so so all of that was, it's amazing that they had this actor and they said, you know what, we're gonna let him, you know, run with the show. And they and listen, he kept up. It wasn't like these guys out shown, uh, shown him. So I was really impressed with him. Marriott Hartley is uh, an interesting character. You know, the, the, the strict, a religious father that you know there are some religious tones there in the, in the middle uh, kind of like uh, um, and, and the overprotective father that I'm only giving her to somebody that's going to marry her and it's you know so um, the beginning is kind of slow and I took a half a great geek away from that and that's the only thing that I could complain about that it was slow and I was a little worried that it wasn't going to be exceptional but I didn't have to worry because Randolph Scott and Joel McRae were amazing. What the surprising part was that Ron Starr was good enough. I was like, I'm, sh I'm, I'm really happy that this guy. And uh, my, the also the thing that shades the is that the wrong guy dies at the end. The sacrificial lamb is the wrong guy. So, I'm not gonna say because they say who did, it. but the sacrificial lamb, which we always talk about, the sacrificial lamb is there to show that what they're doing is dangerous, dangerous. and somebody could die. Um, and I was like, no, no, <laughs> you did that wrong. I, I get it, but I you did that wrong. Um, I and that's my only little nit that I'm picking. But again, it's only a half a great geek for the length of the beginning, which was a little slow, which I would have liked to have seen. Now, we saw a, a, a bar fight, so it wasn't like there's no action. And the bar fight, who's the fighter? Rockstar is the one that's fighting while Joe McRae and, and Randolph Scott are just drinking. And, and Joe McRae is going to get involved in Randolph Scott. No, no, let him have it. All right, so four and a half grade geeks, but this is definitely an exceptional movie. So it is with great pride and respect that we induct Ride the High Country 1962 as our movie number 42 into the Mustache and the Beards Classic Video Library, Classic Archive Motion Picture Yearbook. Take a bow. All right, moving on to our movie number 43. Yes. The Sons of Katie Elder, 1965. Yay. 
another great movie, uh, The Sons of Katie Elder, 1965, is an American Western film, uh, filmed in Panavision, directed by Henry Hathaway, um, who made several dozen movies with either John Wayne, uh, Randolph Scott, or Gary Cooper. Uh -huh. So all, all so the movies that we're talking about today, <laughs> he, he worked with these guys. Uh, filmed in Technicolor and Panavision in Mexico. The plot revolves around the death of a mother, which brings her four sons together for the funeral, where they all learn that none of them have lived up to their mother's expectations. <laughs> all right, and you know, the plot you think of, uh, that, that sounds kind of boring. It's, trust me, this movie, yeah, of all boring. the movies, this is the one that has the most action. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Who wants to come with me? You're not going any place. Oh, you're going to try and stop me? You bet I am. <laughs> and that's for sure. <laughs> Starring John Wayne, Dean Martin, Earl Holliman, Michael Anderson Jr. They're the brothers, right? They're the sons. James Gregory, George Kennedy, and Dennis Hopper. They're the bad guys. <laughs> and uh, with a slew of other ranch hands. Because, you know, you have to have the bad guys outnumber the good guys. <laughs> All right, so the genre classification for this movie is Western, clearly. Yes, clearly. Uh, longevity is 2021. Takeaway 1965 is 56 years. That's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Exceptional. All right. Uh, this is a good old fashioned Western where you know who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. James Gregory is a great actor. Yes. Just in our campy videos. He's played an incompetent politician. Right. Um, he's played the comedic boss in Matt Helm. Yes, right. He has, a, and in this movie, he's an, an authentic, vile villain. Yes. He is a big he's douche. He's a douche. Bad. Yeah. He's bad. Um, John Wayne, Dean Martin, Vistas, Panor Panoramas, we get them, I mean, that they take advantage of the Panavision, I mean, come on. Um, and they show gorgeous sights. Paramount Studios distributed this movie. This movie exceptional. <laughs> um, it is. It it walks a very fine tightrope between being a western action movie and comedic bits because the the brothers uh, when they're together, the mm -hmm. brothers. Are funny. They're funny. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they they play their their interaction, their their friction. Because mm -hmm. right? the brothers don't really get along. Their friction is funny. Michael Anderson Jr. is funny. Mm -hmm. Dean Martin is funny. So, but it doesn't take away from from being a western and action movie. So it, it walks a very. Uh, uh, fine line. I, I, I think it's what uh, makes uh, this movie so much fun. It is a fun movie. The first time that the brothers are together, they fight. Yes, they yes. actually physically yes. have a, a brawl <laughs> inside the house. They're tearing have, up the furniture. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Is, it, is, it is. It is. It is. It is. Uh, it's fun. Dean Martin in, in, in the in the bar with the eye. <laughs> it, 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 it's, 
Uh, yeah. And yet, and yet, there's plenty of of, of, uh, of drama. There's that, uh, uh, a pathos. Uh, there's, you know, it, 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 it walks a very, a very fine line. I think, and I think it does it well. What are we up to now? Paradigm shift. Okay. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say. The, the John Singleton movie. Okay, never mind. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it then. Yeah, Kate, Kate, go yeah, for it. Kate, I yeah, you will remember. I think I'm blind. Usually, when I start talking, that's when you remember. <laughs> Katie Elder was a famous figure in the historical West. That's right. A Hungarian immigrant that supposedly piled around with Doc Holliday. Yeah, big nose Kate. Um, also, for, um, so so this this figure is the MacGuffin. As you know, uh, Alfred Hitchcock was fond of saying, "This is the reason why we have the movie." The Katie Elder is the reason the brothers right, come right. together. K- Katie Elder is never seen. Uh huh. Never seen. So she's because, the MacGuffin because it starts with her funeral. Uh huh. And yet she moves the story along. Correct. So yeah. So this is what a MacGuffin means. Um, also, for the movie called Four Brothers. By oh, John right, Singleton, right, right, right. Uh, uh, is the, uh, he directed this movie and it's loosely based on the sons of Katie Elder. Yeah. So, despite the fact that Katie Elder is the MacGuffin, but you know, movies have been based on this, you know, and brothers movies. Brothers I mean, movies, we, right. you know, even Saving yeah. Private Ryan, which is a brothers right. movie yeah. as well. So yeah. all yeah. of that. Brothers Sullivan. Uh, uh, right. So yeah. So this. Is the paradigm that we're talking about? Right. So yes, this movie does create a paradigm shift, even though it might make it scream a little. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything else that you want to add? Blank. Did you? Okay. So you want to go to ratings? Yeah, let's go to ratings. Okay. <coughs> you want me to go first? You want? Me? Okay. Well, it's t- it's my same grievance that I had with the first movie. For not that it was slow. But the, I give it four and a half great geeks. Four and a half great geeks is still awesome, for almost perfect. I hate that one of the brothers dies. Oh, my and I'm not gonna say which no, one. No, no spoilers. No <laughs> but spoilers. he's the sacrificial lamb again, and we have a sacrificial lamb. And my feeling was, why does this guy have to die when you could have taken one of the leads, which is one. Now I know people would have been more mad about that. But still, if you want a sacrificial lamb, that's the sacrificial lamb. You didn't need, <laughs> you didn't need to kill any of them all. You did. It's not that kind of movie. Uh-huh. Okay. This is a western. This is a true western. That you know, I you, you don't need to reload because you keep shooting. It doesn't matter. Nobody's counting. And 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 the thing, the whole thing was. That the, the brothers were supposed to start here uh-huh. and end here, right? Yeah. That was that's the whole that that's the journey uh-huh. of the movie, right? That the brothers, are, they are, the the spirit, warring, uh, 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 pulling in four direction, brothers start here and that, but they're together here. But you, if you eliminate one of them, you eliminated yeah, that. Yeah, the, what you expected to get, you don't get. The payoff. You lessen the payoff. Oh, correct. I, I am in so much agreement with you on that. But it's still a great movie. And so what would you what's your rating? You said uh, four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah, that's I was gonna mean. take off a whole because <laughs> I'll, I'll, that because that, that brother's pretty valuable. Yes, yes, I really I really didn't like that. Mm-hmm. But I'll take off half. I'll make, it four, I'll make it four and a half and then uh, agree with you. But really, really I, I, I find that... Uh, that is annoying. That is a lot of I find that so irritating. Because it, it's, it's as if... As if um, the brothers were like... Were like, a, a, um, like a four-headed creature. Mm-hmm. Right? And then and then, and then be the taming. And then and that's what you're going to get at the end. But you eliminated one of the hands. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, I like to remake that movie and, and, and do it right. Huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to remake yeah. Dan Wayne and have it out You got some set. 
to say it. The fact that I said that shows Kohonas. Uh -huh. All right, so it is with great pride and respect that we induct The Sons of Katie Elder, 1965, as our movie number 43 into the Mustache and the Beards Classic Video Library, Classic Archive Motion Picture Yearbook. Take a bow. Still love this movie. Go to I? Go to I? Could have been a little bit better. I got to admit that I do like uh, uh, John Wayne and, and Dean Martin together. All right, usually I ask you for a wise missive when we come to the end of the program. But I don't have one today. We don't have one today. Um, sharing is caring, though. Um, so. <laughs> um, and usually I give you the opportunity to give a wise missive just so that I could use the, with that having been said. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason I've asked you for one. Now, oh, I could use an old one. Okay. Uh, you want me to use an old one? Okay. Two wrongs don't make a right, but three rights definitely make a left. <laughs> All right, so please, <laughs> with that having been said, please subscribe to the channel, uh, comment, and like, please. I always thank you for watching. We love you. Yes. We, we haven't do. talked in a while, but listen, we love you. Uh, please. We say be genuine, take care of each other, and most importantly, be kind. Be kind. My name is Louis Matos. I am the mustache. I'm Junior Figueroa. I do the beard. Say, see you later. Hasta la vista. Take it easy. And peace. Mm -hmm.